Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I am back with another episode in our Road to Rank series, where I climb the online VGC 15 ladder. As always, if you want to see another video tomorrow, please leave a like on this one to show your support, and let's aim for 500 likes on this video. In addition, I uploaded an introduction to VGC 2015 video that I think a lot of you will find pretty helpful, so I'll link that in the description below if you have not seen it already, but I think it will prove to be a pretty quality video. Today I am trying out mixed Salamence, this time I've got Return on with a mild nature on my Salamence, supporting it with Landris, Therian, Bisharp, Sylveon, Zapdos, and Hariyama. Of course I tried out fully special uh, Mega Salamence yesterday, but I didn't like it very much, so uh, now we're trying a semi-physical variant. And Return should be really really powerful, boosted by Salamence's ability of course, but hopefully I'll be able to actually use Salamence this time since uh, yesterday it really ended up being Sylveon dominating the competition. I am planning on getting some new Pokemon for the series very soon, so stay tuned for that, but my opponent's going to be a 1665 rated player from Japan with the team of Greninja, Suicune, Talonflame, Kangaskhan, Breloom, and Blaziken, so pretty interesting team right there. Uh, I'm not really sure what I want to lead with. I think Zapdos and Hariyama is pretty solid though against everything he has. The Breloom is definitely the scariest thing, mainly because I don't have many good ways to stop the Spore, though I've got Safety Goggles and Zapdos, which can definitely help out a lot. So Zapdos is really the key Pokemon here. We can have Salamence in the back, uh, which can actually really help out given the return, uh, which can of course KO the Breloom and the Blaziken. And for my last one, I'm thinking Landorus T, but the Suicune and the Greninja are kind of scaring me from that. So it's Landers T or Bisharp, or Sylveon I guess. Landers T matches up nicely against the two potential Megas he has though, which is why I'm leaning towards it. But the Greninja is pretty scary. You know what, I'm gonna go with Sylveon. So I'm gonna go with Hariyama, Zapdos, Salamence, and Sylveon. The idea is to try to spread some paralysis with Zapdos and then bring in Mega Salamence, but we'll see just how it plays out. Okay, so we're gonna get started. He is going to lead with Kangaskhan and Suicune. Okay, that's a very solid lead matchup for me against my Hariyama and Zapdos. This is pretty decent for me because I either get a free close combat off or a free Thunder Wave off against that Kangaskhan. I'm gonna double target it with Thunder Wave and close combat, expecting a fake out coming out from it. There's not very much Suicune can do against either of my Pokemon, and if I can paralyze the Kangaskhan, they'll set me up for the remainder of the game. And he is going to stay in, so I should be able to get a guaranteed uh, either Thunder Wave or Close Combat off. The question is w whether he faked out or not, and who he targeted with this attack. And he does go for the fake out, targeting Hariyama. Okay, that's good, because now Hariyama is going to be able to outspeed Kangaskhan in the remainder of the match. Uh, as he goes for the Toxic onto Zapdos, wasn't expecting that. Uh, it's going to miss the Zapdos, fortunately, meaning I'm going to avoid some damage here as I do get the Paralysis onto Kangaskhan, which is awesome. So now I can just go for the T-Wave onto the Suicune and go for the Close Combat onto Kangaskhan. It's uh, definitely a very good start for me. Paralyzing Kangaskhan is huge, mainly because of how annoying Kangaskhan is to deal with, and Kangaskhan actually outspeeds my team. Of course, Mega Salamence can outspeed it after the Mega Evolution, but he's just going to stay in with Kangaskhan, which is surprising to me, going for the Ice Beam onto my Zapdos, but it is very bulky and takes that like a champ, and it is able to get another Thunder Wave off, this time against the Suicune, paralyzing it, and once again making it slower than everything else. Hariyama is able to outspeed this Kangaskhan, it is going to get the close combat off, and it is enough to knock it out. So a huge knockout for me there, as Mega Kangaskhan basically does absolutely nothing against my team, and I'm very pleased with that. It's one reason why I love Hariyama, actually. Oh, oh, to check the best you know, Mega Evolution, or the most common Mega Evolution, and have a way to one-hit KO it is really great. And when you lead with something like Kangaskhan, Zapdos and Hariyama, excuse me, you're basically forced to... Uh, switch out if you want your Kangaskhan to really do anything for the remainder of the match. And since my opponent didn't switch out, that was a really big first two turns. So he's going to bring in Talonflame here, and that's also really good for me because Zapdos obviously just beats the Talonflame. I'm going to go straight for the Thunderbolt onto Talonflame and switch out my... Uh, do I want to switch out Hariyama? You know what? I'm just going to go for the knock, or I'll go for the close combat onto Suicune if he protects Talonflame. Oh, which he doesn't. He actually goes for the Flare Blitz, which I wasn't expecting, onto Zapdos. Interesting. Not nearly enough to knock me out, though. So I'm probably going to pick up a KO here on the Talonflame and get a lot of damage off against Suicune. 
Yep, as I do knock it out. So he was probably predicting maybe a Protect or a Switch Out, and that's why I didn't switch out with Hariyama. Mainly because I didn't want any of my Pokemon in the back to take a Brave Bird, but I'm not going to complain with how things played out, as Close Combat does around 40% to that very bulky Suicune. Uh... And it actually has the Rocky Helmet, which is interesting. I was wondering what item it had. He goes for the Toxic onto Zapdos. This time it is going to connect, but Zapdos is already at pretty low HP, so I don't really mind that. As I am going to take some Toxic damage this turn around. And Mega Salamence in the back is in a prime position to sweep right now. As he brings in Breloom as his last one. Okay, that's a very good Pokemon to see as my opponent's last one. I'm going to go for the T-Wave here onto the Breloom and go for the Knockoff onto the Suicune. And by doing this, it's effectively setting up Salamence and Sylveon in the back to finish things up. He goes for the Mog Punch onto Zapdos. That's definitely not going to knock me out. Yep, I hang on with 70, 17 HP as I also paralyze this Breloom. So Thunder Wave Zapdos is really doing work this match, paralyzing my opponent's entire team effectively. As Hariyama gets the knockoff as well, it's going to remove the annoying Rocky Helmet that he's got. Let's see if Suicune's able to attack this turn. And it does get the attack off. Who does it target though? Targeting Hariyama, as Hariyama actually hangs on with 10 HP, Zapdos here is going to faint from the poison, but it has done its job, and I'm basically in a position to clean up the game right now. I'm going to bring in Sylveon, just because Sylveon's got a double target move, as opposed to the Salamence, which only has single target moves. And I'm just going to spread some damage. Sylveon should be able to clean up this game by itself with Hyper Voice, but I'm going to go for the Hyper Voice here and the knockoff. Or I guess the Ice Punch onto Breloom. And of course, Breloom very often carries Focus Sash. So if you see Breloom in VGC, you should basically expect Focus Sash. But sometimes it also carries Choice Scarf to get the Surprise Fast Spore off. Uh, both of these Pokemon I actually mentioned in my introduction to VGC video earlier today. But you see how bulky Suicune is. It's a really annoying Pokemon to deal with. But if you can just avoid bringing Pokemon that are weak to it, it basically sits around and doesn't do very much damage. Toxic is an interesting move, but in VGC it's not very good most of the time, mainly because you're not going to get enough turns to actually allow that residual damage to add up. Uh, and wow, Hyper Voice here actually knocks out the Suicune, I believe, and brings Breloom down to its Focus Sash, so Life Orb, Hyper Voice, Sylveon really doing work. As it picks up the KO there, and Hariyama here is going to knock out the Breloom, so I'm going to take a 3-0 win without even using Mega Salamence. Of course, I am going to be playing another match, so I'm hoping that Mega Salamence can come around this time, but pretty nice 3-0 win for me there to start off the day, and Thunder Wave Zapdos was the real MVP there, though Hariyama did a lot of work as well, so you see the power of that combination. Uh, fake Out user plus Thunder Wave user to start off any game in VGC is always really solid, and in this case, my opponent just didn't really have many ways to deal with Thunder Wave Zapdos, so I was really, really nice. I guess one reason why I'm kind of scared to lead with Salomon so often is because of the fact it gets, uh, it's four times weak to ice type attacks, and you know, my last opponent had like Greninja, uh, which is obviously really scary because of how fast it is and because it gets access to ice beam. So I'm kind of wary of leading with Salomon a lot of the time, but my second opponent of the day is going to be a 1665 rated player from Japan. Sorry, I had to quickly grab my charger there, but this opponent's got Swamper, Salamence, Sylveon, Talonflame, Meowstic, and Ferrothorn. So, pretty interesting team. Two potential Omegas in Swamper and Salamence. Uh, the Sylveon's definitely really scary as well. Sylveon's always really annoying to deal with. I like leading with Bisharp here, actually. Bisharp counters the Sylveon and the Meowstic pretty well, and if he leads with the Salamence, then he's going to give me a free boost. So I feel good leading there with Bisharp. Uh, the question is who I want to pair with it. Of course, the one thing that really threatens, or I guess the two things that threaten Bisharp are the Talonflame and the Swampert. So I'm actually thinking of leading with Landorus as well. I'm going to go with Landorus, which is a choice ban variant. Bisharp, Salamence in the back. And for my last one, I'm thinking Hariyama or Zapdos, actually. Um, Sylveon also works, all of these are viable options, but let's think. Sylveon doesn't really like taking, it doesn't, well first of all it doesn't match up well against the Ferrothorn. Zapdos on the other hand gets Heat Wave and Thunderbolt. You know what, Zapdos did a lot of work that last game, I'm going to bring it this time around and hope it produces the same results. Though Hariyama might have been a better call, so I guess we'll find out. It's just I don't like taking Fairy-type attacks with that Hariyama, and I definitely plan on using 
more Sylveon counter Pokemon in the future, especially Heatran. That's one legendary I want to try out in future episodes, but I actually need to get one of those. So I'm going to lead with my Choice Band Landorus and Focus Sash Bisharp against his Sylveon and Swampert. Interesting. It's not a bad lead matchup for me, but not the best either. Intimidate here is going to help out though against the Swampert. Obviously not really going to do much against the Sylveon. This first turn, I'm expecting to protect out of that Sylveon. So I'm tempted to U-turn. Oh, there are a lot of options here actually. The question is whether he protects with Sylveon or not. You know, I'm going to protect with Bishop this first turn, and... Actually, no, that's silly. Yeah, I'm going to assume this is Mega Swampert. So I'm going to go for the Sucker Punch, knowing that that's going to do more damage, and the U-turn onto Swampert as well. He's actually going to withdraw Sylveon, which is good, because I wasn't expecting it to stay around. It looks like Talonflame's coming in. Yep. And that is going to be Mega Swampert. So, uh, I presume we'll see an Earthquake come out of it. Mega Swampert, of course, its, its ability is not really going to do much this game, which is good because it would actually be real and annoying if it outspeeds my team. Uh, the Sucker Punch there does a decent amount of damage, actually, and combined with this Choice Band U-Turn should bring it down to Sucker Punch KO range this next turn. Uh, but I presume he's going to go for the Earthquake here. To replace it, I think I'm going to... Uh, this is tough. If he went for the Ice Punch, I might be in some trouble. Um, but I'm going to go for the Zapdos, mainly because Zapdos counters the Talonflame pretty well. I'm going to guess he went for the Earthquake with the Swampert, though. Let's see. Yep, he did go for the EQ. So, uh, pretty even trade-off this first turn on both ends. I bring his Mega down to very low HP as he gets an Earthquake off against my uh, Bisharp, of course. So now the question is whether I protect with Bisharp or not. He can protect with Talonflame and just Earthquake again with Swampert, or maybe he'll just Brave Bird my T Bisharp. Uh, and Ice Punch Zapdos, but I'm going to make the save play. I'm just going to Sucker Punch the Swamper and Thunderbolt the Talonflame. And I'm fine with trading Pokemon here. And if he does try to get fancy and protect with Talonflame, then I'll just knock out his Swamper, which would be really nice. Uh, of course, he's actually going to switch out Swamper. Interesting play. In comes, I think, Sylveon once again. Yep. As he goes for the Protect. Okay. Uh, that was a very smart play on my opponent's end. Uh, he avoids getting KO'd, as he also gets in Sylveon for free. So, smart play by my opponent there. Once again, I'm going to make the same play. Actually, mm, this is tough. The thing was, the thing is, like, Bisharp is my only really good way to beat the Sylveon, so I'm not sure if I want to switch it out to conserve it, or if I want to go for the risk again. Of course, now I can protect and just Thunderbolt the Talonflame, but... He could switch out Talonflame into Swampert, and to take that Thunderbolt. Is Talonflame really a big threat though? Not quite. I'm going to protect Hero with Bisharp and Thunder Wave the Sylveon, I think. Actually, no. I'm going to protect with Bisharp and just Thunderbolt Talonflame. If he switches out, then Bisharp should be able to outspeed it next turn. He stays in with Talonflame, and this should be good if I can pick up the knockout here. Yep, he does Brave Bird perfectly into the Bisharp as Zapdos gets the Thunderbolt off. So I was making a safe play there, and it looks like it's going to pay off as I get the one-hit KO onto Talonflame, setting up my Bisharp for the Sylveon. So, made the safer play there, and it definitely paid off as he goes for the Hyper Voice with Sylveon. Let's see how much it does to the Zapdos. Not too much, uh, just under 50%, but once again, Sylveon's so annoying to deal with. But I do pick up a knockout there on Talonflame, which is great, as Meowstic actually comes in, and that's a pretty good Pokemon for me to see as my opponent's last one. I'm gonna go for the knockoff, actually, onto the Meowstic, and the T-Wave onto the Sylveon. As he actually switches out Sylveon, wow, he is making the plays right now. In comes Mega Swampert. Let's see what Meowstic went for. Going for the Rain Dance! Oh, so earlier I said I didn't really see a way of setting the Swampert up, but if there's any way, I guess that's how you go for it. Interesting, I did not expect to see that, but that's actually going to help out my opponent a lot, and I might be in some trouble right now. But this knockoff should KO the Meowstic as it does. So I'm up 4-2 right now, but Mega Swampert's actually in a position to sweep me, uh, which is kind of scary. So this is going to be an interesting final couple of turns as the Sylveon comes back in. I'm going to protect with Bisharp here, and... Ooh, this is tough. 
So, Mega Swampert has two plays here. The question is whether it protects or just goes for an attack. And if it does go for attack, it's probably going to Ice Punch my Zapdos. I would expect it to. Uh, so under that logic, you know what? In the other play he can make is, of course, Protect Swamper and just Hyper Voice with Sylveon, which is honestly what I'm expecting him to do. So I'm gonna Iron Head and T-Bolt. Yeah, I'm gonna Iron Head and T-Bolt the Sylveon here, expecting to Protect to come out from Swamper, and call it as it is, Swamper is going to Protect, so I am gonna be able to get the attacks off here against the Sylveon, Thunderbolt, and Bisharp is able to outspeed it, getting this Iron Head off will be able to knock it out, it does. So, I'm actually going to win the game, I think, 4-0 with Zapdos and Bisharp here. And nothing's going to happen, and yeah, I think my opponent really had to make that play, because otherwise, you know, the Sucker Punch play was too obvious, and Hyper Voice, had I targeted the Swamper, would have actually put him up a significant amount. So, uh, it was a pretty monumental turn, despite how big my lead is, and now I can just Sucker Punch and Roost and call it a game, and my opponent's going to forfeit there. So, 4-1 win for me here. Unfortunately, Mega Salamence, once again, not making an appearance, but... I guess Zapdos, Bisharp, and <laughs> Landorus, and Hariyama in the first game are just too strong. So, if anything, this game just shows uh, you don't really need the Mega Evolution every game to really pull out with a win. Both games, I really didn't need Mega Salamence whatsoever. Uh, my supporting cast was more than enough to end up winning the game. But, yeah, that's it for today's match, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, leave a like if you did, and let's aim for another 500 likes for an upload tomorrow. Anyway, that's it for today's video, guys, and I'll see you next time. Peace.